When it comes to spending money on my PC, the AIO cooler or all-in-one cooler has always been one of those products I didn't want to spend money on as it's not really needed for general gaming. Now when it comes to general gaming, the stock CPU coolers are usually good enough as it doesn't require that much cooling on general gaming uses. But since I've gotten into YouTube, I've actually started doing a lot more rendering of videos, which usually pushes my CPU load into the 90s, which then on a very hot day usually also pushes the temperatures of my CPU into the 90s. So I thought it's best to start invest in a liquid cooler. Now I thought this would be a good video because there are actually a bunch of reasons why you would want to get yourself an AIO cooler. And it's not just about temperatures reaching the maximums or levels that you're not comfortable with. Now before we actually get into unboxing and everything of this video, let's get into the why you might want to actually buy an AIO cooler. Now of course the first and most obvious reason is if your temperatures do reach a high level of let's say high 80s or 90s, you might want to actually invest in an AIO cooler or you might actually want to check the airflow in your case as that could also be an issue. You may not actually have enough cool air coming into the system or you're not actually exhausting all of the hot air out of the system. So before you actually go in and buy an AI cooler, maybe check the airflow of your case first. Now, of course, secondly, you do get CPUs like the K CPUs from Intel, which are the overclockable CPUs. They actually do not come with stock CPU coolers and if you want to get a cooler, you might actually want to get either an AIO cooler or an air cooler, whichever is best for you. But then, of course, you're going to have to actually buy a cooler. And then thirdly, of course, is if you actually overclock your system, you may actually need to get better cooling. And then, of course, an AIO cooler will be better than an air cooler unless you get some sort of heavy, beefy air cooler. But in that case, you still have sufficient cooling for your system. Now the model I opted for was the Cooler Master Master Liquid Light 240, which features two 120 millimeter fans, which equates to the 240 mil, and it has a 240 mil radiator, which should fit into most cases, even if you have a smaller case. Now the reason this is good is this means that you can actually reuse this cooler in many different cases, especially if you decide to actually shrink down your system, because a lot of people are actually going from normal ATX to ITX or mini ITX boards. And for that reason, you can still use the CPU cooler even if your case shrinks down. Now this cooler is relatively cheap, especially compared to other CPU coolers. And the reason is mostly because of the fact that you don't get RGB fans, which is fine. You can just replace those fans with any other RGB fans that you want. And it will actually look good if you can replace all of the fans in your case to have them all uniform. That way you're not overspending on more expensive fans that you're not going to need on this cooler. Now, another reason this is actually a cheaper one is you don't actually get the fancy braided cables. So these cables will lose a little bit more water over time through the cables. And if you want to check out a video on CPU coolers and everything, I'll leave a link down to Jay's video on Jay's Two Cents, where he kind of speaks in more depth on AIO coolers and how to mount them, etc. So if you want to learn more, go check out that video. And then of course you don't get a fancy pump with all of the RGB or an OLED or LCD screen as most of the newer CPU coolers do have. Now the reason I actually chose this one is mainly because of the price and the features that you don't get. So a lot of features are left out which could make a CPU cooler expensive, which means this could actually be a really good cooler for the price and if you want to add your own fans to this, you can make this look extremely good at an extremely low price. And then of course I also chose this as most of you are probably building new PCs and this is probably a point where you can save a little bit of money by not having the aesthetics of a more expensive CPU cooler, but still have decent cooling for any CPU that you choose. Now the CPU cooler is from Cooler Master, which is a reputable brand. So even though it is a cheap cooler, it should actually still perform really well. So we'll check the numbers at a later stage in this video. Now let's get into actually unboxing this thing. And if you take a look at the case, it is pretty big. You do get the pump included and the radiator. It seems like you may need to build most of this yourself. So let's actually open it up and see what we got inside. 
Now if you flip this open, you actually have this little piece of thin foam at the top, which will actually help protect the parts. And if I can just quickly flip it for you guys, you can see on the inside all of the parts you have there. It's pretty good. It seems to be pre-assembled apart from the fans, which is pretty standard. So you have this little booklet, which you can, of course, just throw away. Actually, don't, don't throw it away if you don't know how to assemble these. If you don't know how to assemble these, please read the booklet as you actually can damage your radiator if you don't do this correctly. So read the manual if you, if you don't know how to do this. So included are the two fans, which are pretty standard. You have your, your actual pump, which is connected by these rubber hoses. As I said, this is, this is not your more expensive braided hoses. These are actually plastic hoses. So yeah, here's all your screws and everything that you will need. And I think that is all. That is it for what's inside of the box. Um, at least you do get the thermal paste. I was kind of worried about that, especially spending this low amount. I thought that's what they do not include, but at least they've included it. I like the fact that it has a thin cable. It's really good. It actually, it feels heavy. It doesn't feel cheap. The pump actually feels really heavy, which is really nice. It is really high quality and it seems like it still has some sort of lighting or RGB light in the Cooler Master logo on the pump. Now, when it comes to the cooling performance of the CPU cooler, I'm gonna be comparing it to the stock Intel cooler that I have installed in my PC currently. So let's see if this actually does a whole lot better job at cooling the CPU than the stock Intel cooler, or if it's just a slight decrease in temperatures, which means that this cooler might not be as great as I would have thought for the price initially. <laughs> Now here's my stress test of my CPU at 100% load with a stock Intel cooler. And as you can see, the temperatures on some of the cores reach around 80 degrees C while some hover in the high 70s. Now this test was done on a colder day and when it gets hotter, the CPU can reach up to 92 degrees C, which I am personally not comfortable with. And here are the CPU temps under the same 100% load, but this time using the AIO cooler. Now, as you can see, the temperatures are way lower with the maximum reaching around 54 degrees and the rest kind of hovering in the 50 degree range. Now, I did actually plan on shooting how I assembled everything and how I actually installed it into the PC, but everything that could go wrong actually went wrong. So I actually didn't film that or I filmed part of it, but then it just became a whole mess. So I ended up not recording it and it's not gonna be added in this video, but it is very simple to actually install an AIO cooler. You have your screws that you just screw in either at the top or in the front. And with the case that I had, the motherboard is actually too high, so I can't mount the radiator at the top because then the memory actually don't have space to actually fit in with the fans. And when I wanted to mount it in the front, I actually had to remove a bunch of the hardware bays to actually make space to just barely put it in it's not even in with a lot of clearance it just barely fits in so it was a whole lot of work that i needed to get done it's a whole lot of work i needed to do i had to relocate a bunch of fans so for that reason it's actually not in this video but it is installed and here's what it looks like Now the Cooler Master logo on the front of the pump actually does light up and that actually makes it look a little better than I thought it would look if it was just the normal Cooler Master logo that didn't light up. But the rest of course is non-RGB and that is kind of where the aesthetics of the entire thing ends as everything is just kind of plain. Now the bigger question is would I recommend this cooler and yes, yes I would and it also comes with a butt. Uh, the cooler is amazing. It actually does well with the temps. It feels heavy, like the pump and everything does feel heavy. It's easy to replace the fan, so if the fans are very low quality, you can easily replace those with any other fan. And it's good if you actually wanna have a uniform fan look 
then you don't have to overspend for fans that you're going to replace anyway. So it is, in some way, it is actually good that you don't get a lot of fancy stuff. Um, but also the pump doesn't have RGB, it does have the light up logo, it doesn't have a screen. So if that is something that you're looking for, this is something that you can't actually replace as that is the pump unit. You can't just swap them out like you can with the fans. So if that is a deal breaker for you, do not consider buying this as you can't replace that. And then of course the pipes are actually a big problem as they do look cheap and i think they are the cheaper variant which loses water over time quicker than other pipes do so just bear that in mind that you're either gonna have to refill this radiator much quicker than you would any other radiator and of course if you can't refill it you may have to replace this water cooler quicker than you would most other water coolers now another thing I just want to mention as well, just because I actually ran into this problem, is make sure that you have enough space for an AIO cooler, whether it is in the front or at the top of your case, as mine, as I said, barely fits in the front of the case and that was with me making alterations to the case, as I had to remove a few parts to actually make space for it. So just make sure that you actually have enough space before you go and buy a liquid cooler that you can actually use and if you can't actually fit it in, maybe just consider getting a better air cooling solution and maybe getting a CPU cooler that is an air cooler instead of an AIO cooler. Now with all that being said, the positives do outweigh the negatives as the CPU cooler does exactly what it does. It reduced my temperatures by a bunch, even in idle, it idles at around 30 degrees C, where it used to idle within the 40s or 50 range, depending on the temperature of the day. And even under load, it goes up to 50 degrees instead of actually going up to 70, 80 or even 90 degrees C, which is a whole lot better than I actually thought it would do. So I would definitely recommend if you're looking for some sort of cooling, do consider this. It is a really good cooler for the price. And I, I have to say there's really nothing wrong with it except for probably the fans which can easily be replaced really not that big of a problem and that is it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please leave a like subscribe and also hit that little bell notification to get notified when i post videos like this in the future also let me know down in the comments do you enjoy this new setup with kind of the case being displayed and the table and everything if you do tell me down below I'd really love to know if you guys enjoy this. If you guys don't enjoy this, we can always try something else. In the future, of course, I will have a lot more B-roll. Um, today, the B-roll shots that I planned actually didn't work out as I, as I needed to rip a bunch of parts out and I, it took me way longer than it should have and it's, it's just a mess. So for the future, we'll definitely be doing more B-roll. And I hope you guys enjoyed the little B-roll section that we actually did have in this one. But once again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comment section below. And also, if you have any questions, ask me down in the comment section below or join me when I'm live on Twitch. I stream on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday afternoon. Links to that down in the description below. Also, all of my other socials, if you want to follow me, all of them are down in the description below. Hope to see you guys there. And until next time, cheers.